Welcome to EPG Patshala. We are looking at the contents of English literature 1590 to 1798 and today we are looking at the play Will, William Wycherley's play The Country Wife. Now William Wycherley belongs to the period of restoration drama in English literature and we shall be considering briefly the backgrounds to the writing of Wycherley's Country Wife, The Comedy of Manners and so on. We begin, of course, with Wycherley's details. Wycherley was one of the major restoration playwrights, lived between 1640 and 1716. And the background is that Charles II had just been restored to the throne of England during this period. And in 1660, he comes back to the crown and the theatres, which had been shut down during the Puritan regime from 1642, there was no theatrical activity in England. If you think about it, from uh, 1590 through till about 1625 is the height of theatrical activity. After that, with the unrest at court, things began tapering off. By 1642, when the rise of the ascendancy of the Puritans, the theatres were shut down. So now... The theatres are finally opening up once again, 1660, with Charles II being crowned King of England. One major attraction during this period for the theatres, theatre goers and for theatres was that women actors were finally allowed on stage. Earlier Renaissance drama did not permit women actors as we have looked already at this aspect. Now that there could be women on stage, there was a whole lot of excitement at seeing this. And so there were huge crowds at theatres. Another element that contributed to the attractive nature of the Restoration Theatre was the fact that the solemn seriousness of the Puritans was replaced with great wit and levity. There was hilarity in the Caroline Court. And that hilarity and that enjoyment of life also then percolated onto the stage. So Restoration Comedy the comedy of manners during this period is about aristocratic lifestyles. And unfortunately for us, maybe we are more prudish than the Restoration people were. It dealt with sexual intrigue, conquest. Everybody was leading this highly moral life. It was supposed to be reflective of the court of the time. So Charles II's court was a free and easy court. And Restoration drama likewise was something that was concerned with characters who were aristocrats. So you did not have commonplace people. Middle classes, lower classes were not included. Instead, the aristocracy were the main characters on stage in restoration dramas, restoration comedy. And it did not lead to stories of pure love or of love leading to marriage. Instead, Though there might be love leading to marriage, there was a lot of sexual intrigue, a lot of corruption which was displayed on stage. These plays have a lot of wit, of course. So witty dialogue was central to the play. But in addition, there were stock characters. So you usually had jealous husbands, roving, roving wives. Then, of course, there would always be a libertine heroine, who, uh, a libertine hero who was interested in sleeping with as many women as possible in the course of the play. There would be a plot that would move extremely swiftly and with several twists and turns. So these twists and turns were usually caused by deception or by miscommunication. If these are the characteristics of restoration comedy, then what we see in which Ali's play, The Country Wife, is an example par excellence of that comedy. The comedy of manners, though it did all of these, though it was fun, great fun to watch, and though it was about sexual intrigue and so on and so forth, it also, of course, satirized the hypocrisy of the ruling classes, the upper classes. So people pretended to be what they were not. And that pretense, that pretentiousness and that hypocrisy in their morality was wittily held up to satirical study in these comedies. Themes, of course, usually revolving around marriage and intrigue, the relationship between the sexes. Now, all intrigues did not lead to marriage. So usually in a play, there would be a lot of, a number of couples who would be depicted. You would be sure the not so good couples, the couples which have a chance of happiness, the couples which are terribly not, uh, absolutely not going to be happy. And then there would be one couple which would demonstrate the possibility of a good marriage. Plays that are included usually in this category of 
comedy of manners or restoration comedy include Etheridge's Man of More, William Mitchell's Country Wife, which we should be studying here, Congreve's Way of the World, which also has a lesson upon it, and several others as well. Now, restoration comedy has had a lot of criticism, has attracted over the years a lot of criticism. One of the earliest critics was Jeremy Collier, who in 1698 said of restoration comedy that it is to be decried for its muddiness of expression, its lewd application of scripture, and for making their top characters libertines and giving them success in their debauchery. If you think about it, in one sentence, he has demolished all that restoration comedy is and does because it holds up libertines, loose moral men, as heroes. So he says, by making them successful in their doings, we are then upholding an immoral lifestyle. So you can see the point that he is making over here. Now, in the Victorian era, critics such as William Hazlitt, in the Romantic and Victorian era, this, though they appreciated the wit and the humor and the aesthetic quality, the enormous energy of these plays, they also said that morally they aren't quite all right. So the inadequacy was on moral grounds, not on the grounds of form or the grounds of dialogue, all of which were seen to be wonderful because these were really active plays. A lot happened in them, a lot was said in them and what was said was said wittily and with humor and it was entertaining. But that the entertainment was grounded in immorality was something that people had a problem with. In the 20th century, people have stopped looking at just the moral, immoral aspects of the play. And instead, they are talking about other things. So somebody like John Palmer then focuses on the fact that these comedies changed after the publication of Jeremy Collier's pamphlet. Because after that, what you see is that there is a more middle-class kind of comedy which comes into being. And examples of that include Sheridan's Rivals as well as uh, Goldsmith's She Stoops to Conquer. And another aspect which these plays have and which has been studied in the 20th century is about how youth and old age are portrayed in them. Because usually there will be this old husband who is weak and tottering and who can't really keep his young and pretty wife with him. And then there will be how youth and old age don't really get along in this. This, this has been examined by Elizabeth Minot as well. The development of the genre and its connections to society at large has been studied. And as we said, it was in some many ways representative of the Restoration Court and the court of Charles II. Now, Charles II's court is not said to be a place of great moral virtue. Instead, it was a place of great fun. And that fun, which was a lot of it grounded in sexual intrigue, is what is reflected in the plays as well. So the development of the genre as connected intimately to the changes in society at large during this period is something that was studied by Newell Sawyer. And others have done close readings of the text. And there has been, and this is something that you will see also when you read your other uh, plays due of the period, the position of women and how that is analyzed, changed, and what it reveals about the attitude towards women during this time. That was studied by a lot of feminist critics in the 20th century as well. We will now briefly summarize the play, Witcherly's Country Wife. And it begins, of course, with the central character, a Mr. Horner, who says that he is then going to pretend to be important because he has contracted a venereal disease while in France. And because he is important, now this is of course a trick that he's playing upon everybody in society, because by claiming to be important, what will happen is that all the men will be comfortable about leaving their wives with him and therefore then he hopes to sleep with as many wives as possible. Now, looking at this bald summary itself, we might feel squeamish about it. But this is how the play starts. He is of course a philanderer. And he hopes to have unobstructed access to all wives, sisters, fiancés, etc. Because he claims to be important, a eunuch, no better than a eunuch, because he got a disease when he was in France. And we see this happening soon after because you have a old businessman, Sir Jasper Fidget. He comes visiting with his wife and his sister. And though they make fun of Mr. Horner, though they laugh at him and so on and so forth, he then is able to convince them that this is the truth, that he has been ill, 
that he is now no longer capable of performing in uh, the sexual act. And therefore, then uh, nobody needs to feel afraid of being in his company, neither women, nor their husbands, nor their fiancés, nor their brothers, etc., etc. And because Horner is able to play this role so convincingly, Sir Jasper invites him for dinner and then leaves at that point in time. Then, of course, his friends come visiting. His friends include Dor Mr. Doral and Mr. Frank Harcourt and Mr. Sparkish. In addition, there is also somebody who is central to the development of the entire play, Mr. Pinchwife. Now, Mr. Pinchwife is the person who has married the country wife. The country wife is a young woman, very pretty, but because she is from the country, she is not used to the lax morals of the city and of the court. And he, Mr. Pinchwife, wants to keep her hidden away. He does not want her mingling with the others. He doesn't want her to take on the kinds of roles and behavior that is common amongst wives in London. Now, Marjorie Pinchwife, his wife, the country wife, is of course deeply unhappy because she has come to London. She wants to live the London lifestyle. And he is jealous he is scared that she will then, of course, cuckold him, that she will be adulterous. And so he is constantly worried and he tries to keep her away from all men. He tries to keep her also under lock and key, which of course doesn't work. Mr. Pinchwife also has a sister, Alethea, who tries to make Marjorie Pinchwife see sense. Now, Sparkish is engaged to Alethea. And it is at this point that Alethea also meets Mr. Harcourt. This gives us the true love part of the story. Mr. Harcourt falls in love with Alethea. Alethea is interested in him, but is also honorable enough to believe that because she is engaged to Mr. Sparkish, she should be decent about it and marry him. And so she does not then pay any attention to Harcourt. Harcourt tries to make her break off the engagement. She refuses because she believes that Sparkish would be hurt. And so... They, you see the beginnings of truth and love coming together in Alethea and Mr. Harcourt. The rest of the play is concerned with how Mr. Horner manages to seduce a whole lot of people, Lady Fidget, Dainty Fidget and so on and so forth. And eventually also tries to meet up with Mrs. Pinchwife because they've all heard of Mrs. Pinchwife. She's supposed to be very pretty and she wants to be a part of the London scene. So they want to make her into a part of the London scene. And Pinchwife is of course trying to keep her from it and eventually he slips away from them all. Now, Honor, by making the women realize that actually the story of his disease and his importance is all a hoax and a lie, he is able to then, of course, sleep with them progressively, several of them, in the play. And meanwhile, Mr. Pinchwife decides to take out his wife. She meets up with Mr. Honor and then she he recognizes her. And then because Pinchwife has insisted that she should dress up as a man uh, because if she wants to go out, he says he will have this young man come to dinner with him and there is no way that pinch wife can do anything about it. So you see then that intrigues are already in motion. Mrs. Pinchwife is planning to sleep with Mr. Horner and vice versa. Mr. Pinchwife is of course determined to prevent this at any cost. Alethea is angry because Mr. Harcourt is trying to woo her away from Mr. Sparkish and she believes that Mr. Sparkish being his friend, he should be slightly more decent towards him. And then finally, as we go on, Alethea discovers that Mr. Sparkish is not really a nice person. And so she decides that she had better love Harcourt because she does love him. And it was only decency and good, good manners that was keeping her from marrying him. So she then switches her affections to Harcourt and Sparkish is left out in the cold. In the meantime, Mrs. Pinchwife is completely fascinated by Mr. Horner and he forces her to write a letter to Horner which which she actually switches and then she pretends that even though she's writing a letter saying that she doesn't like Mr. Horner, she sends him a love letter and her husband itself carries that love letter. In the meantime, Horner is making his way through the women of the city in the sense that he's sleeping with every one of them as the time goes on, right under the noses of their husbands and their guardians. By now, Mrs. Pinchwife is caught, Marjorie Pinchwife is caught by her husband writing love letters to Mr. Horner. She saves herself by blaming Alethea for this. And Pinchwife decides to give Alethea in marriage to Horner. Who doesn't want her? It's Harcourt who wants her. And he takes 
Alethea or what he believes to be Alethea to Honor's house, except that he's taking his own wife to Honor's house. And he leaves her there. Now, as we can see, this is also then making a mockery of marriage itself because the husband is the one who's taking his wife and leaving her with another man. Right? So, Alethea, in the end, of course, marries Mr. Harcourt and that is the one good marriage that we can hope for. Everybody else is still doing their own thing. So Mr. Horner is sleeping with everybody else. Mr. Pinchwife is still jealous of everybody else and so on and so forth. In the end of the story, what we have is Horner's disease is still believed in by the men of the society because all the women band together so that they can continue to fool their husbands. So the idea of this moral women and immoral men is also defeated because the women are equally immoral within this play. The play does not end with Mr. Horner becoming, being exposed in public and reforming his ways. Instead, it ends where it began, with him claiming to be important, all the women knowing the truth, and he is enjoying the benefits of that so-called importance. Now, one of course, one of the major elements in most of these dramas is the fact of the characterization. What we see is that the names of the characters reflect what they are. So, pinch wife is somebody who pinched his wife up from the countryside as a young pretty girl and brings her into the city. Horner is of course literally a cold maker, somebody who goes around putting horns upon other men by stealing their wives from them. Sparkish believes that he has a sparky sense of wit, but actually he's pretty foolish. Lady Fidget and her sister Dainty Fidget are both people who fidget around, who play around in private without doing any damage to their honor. Now, one way of thinking about all of these characters is to look at them in terms of restoration intellectualism. Now, the people of the restoration believed that you had three strands to your character. One was the strand of skepticism, where you did not believe in things such as faith or matters of spiritual interest. Instead, you kept them aside skeptically. Spirituality and all things beyond human understanding were to be discarded or treated with skepticism. The second aspect that they believed in was libertinism. Enjoy life, hedonistic pleasure, and pleasure is what you live for. And the third one is to be truthful and unpretentious, that you are ideally in search for the one person who will be truthful to you. These are the three strands which go together to making the true restoration individual. And what we see in this play is that the true restoration individual is characterized for us by people such as Mr. Horner, Mr. Harcourt and Alethea. Now, Horner fits into it because one, of course, he lives for pleasure. Two, he's skeptical about all these social codes of propriety, things that he believes are not really necessary, and of course about all spiritual matters. The pinch wives, the fidgets, the squeamishes, all of them fall prey to him because he is the perfect epitome of the restoration, individual restoration courtier, who would then succeed in spite of everything that is done against him. Another way of characterizing the, char uh, the main characters in a restoration comedy would be along the lines of what a critic has called the true wits, the witwoods and the lackwits. The true wits are people like Honor, Alethea and Harcourt, who are all of them marked by the essence of the age. That they are skeptics, that they are libertines living for pleasure and that they are natural people who believe in truth and so on and so forth. And that is the true wit of the age and as we can see, Alethea and uh, Mr. Harcourt are given a happy ending because they do not fool themselves. They stand for truth in the sense that they might deceive others but they are not deceiving themselves. Whereas the other characters, people who are either witwoods or who are lackwoods, they deceive themselves primarily and then they deceive others. Now, the Witwoods were those who aspire to being witty, who aspire to being restoration individuals. And in this would be people like this, uh, Mr. Sparkish as well as the Fidgets, who want to become like Mr. Harcourt and Alethea and who want to belong to a certain class of society. And then, of course, there are the Lackwits like Mr. Pinchwife, who comes from the countryside, and so on and so forth, and who can be fooled by everybody. So, Witwoods was an aspirational stage. Lackwits is somebody who doesn't have it at all. And then there are the true wits, 
the true wits who were the epitome of restoration civilization. Now, there are three plot lines within the text and these plot lines are fairly well defined and well connected to each other as well. The first of course is Mr. Horner's trick of fooling the world that he is important and that is the principal storyline. The second storyline is Marjorie Pinchwife's story of somebody who comes up from the country and who then grows from a lack wit into one day she will be a true wit, Marjorie Pinchwife, because she doesn't fool herself. She knows that she is here for pleasure and she's willing to do whatever it takes for that. And the third, of course, is the romance, if you will call it that. The rather elevating, the rather honest romance between Harcourt and Alethea. Now, other devices are used as well within the text and these include puns. Now, the word lie is a crucial word within the text because it's used in several contexts. People lie to each other. People lie with each other. So lie here is both action as well as word. They perform it and they speak it all the time. And in performance also it is a lie because they do not lie with their true loves or with people they are married to. They lie with anybody and everybody. We also see the use of irony within the play. In fact, the play is both witty and ironic at several levels within the text because the irony is that though Pinch Wife is so jealous for his wife's honor, she tricks him into carrying, taking her to her to-be lover's house. Right? And that knowledge is something that she uses. His intense jealousy, that knowledge of that jealousy is something that she uses so that she can then cuckold him. And he discovers that whatever he does, he cannot succeed. So the irony is also there when he reveals Horner's name to her, when he says that he makes his wife dress up as a boy to take her to a play and then he is stuck in a place wherein he can do nothing. Because if it is a boy, then others can invite him for lunch and dinner. Other men can take him out for lunch or dinner or whatever. And there is no way that he can stop him. So he's stuck in a place wherein, ironically, he has placed himself. There is, of course, also witty dialogue, which is integral to any restoration comedy. And a lot of it takes place in the so-called China scene. Now, the China scene is one where Lady Fidget comes to Horner's house and she wants China. And she says that she has come to borrow some China from him, crockery from him. And they go into an inside room and we all know what's happening. But the myth of this whole borrowing China continues. You also have lines such as women and fortune are truest still to those that trust them. And this is something that Alethea and Harcourt exemplify. Because Harcourt trusts her, she says that she would rather marry him and she would rather bestow her fortunes upon him. Because she discovers that Sparkish, who was pretending to be her a decent guy and who was her fiancé, who was she was engaged to, he was only marrying her for her money. So at that point, she realizes that women and fortune are truest still to those that trust them. So you have wit, which is also combined with truth, that if you trust a woman, she is more likely to be trustworthy than if you are forever jealously putting boundaries on her. Then, of course, mistresses are like books. If you pour upon them too much, they doze you and make you unfit for company. But if used discreetly, you are the fitter for conversation by them. Now, all of these are also aspects of the woman that we are being introduced to. That they are comments upon women which are being made by men. Even if in the play it is being made by a woman. It's still Vitaly who is finally making those comments about women. And so we are being given an analysis of the woman's character via the play in all the restoration comedies as well. Finally, of course, we have the themes of restoration comedy as exemplified by Vigili's Country Wife. And it gives us a whole lot of things to talk about. Primary, of course, is the relationship between the sexes. And there is also, in addition to this, lust versus love or love versus sex, whatever you want to call it. And there is the idea of unequal marriages versus what would be called either equal marriages or companion marriages. Now, the country wife, as all the other texts, also demonstrates the hollowness of a marriage where there is no trust, there is no affection bit or understanding between the partners. This is exemplified by two marriages, at least within the play. One is that of the pinch wives, which is a new marriage. Mr. Pinch wife has just married this girl from the country and brought her up into London. But it's already failed because of the jealousy of the husband and because 
he cannot trust her or he does not believe that she is trustworthy the other marriage that demonstrates the hollowness of a marriage in which there is no understanding no affection between the couple is that of the fidgets and there it is because mr fidget is far more interested in being a businessman and earning a lot of money than in paying attention to his wife and being caring towards his wife now this we see because in the text itself we see that mr pinch wife locks up majri in a room rather than letting her go out sir jasper's idea of dealing with his wife is to provide her with any silly entertainments that he can find whereas he is in- interested of course in earning more money and co- performing business deals and pinch wife also talks about marriage as a business transaction now this is also something that's sim- important in restoration comedy that marriage is not seen as being about love affection companionship etc it is also seen as being a business deal so how much money who can bring into the marriage and how much money the woman has was crucial to any marriage taking place and all of the characters whom we see as negative within the play are all seen as people who are interested more in other aspects of marriage rather than the idea that marriage provides companionship so there is also this idea that people like lady fidget and uh, marjorie pinch wife are locked up as if they are objects and objects who can be bartered in business so there is this whole commercial mindset that we see for the husbands within the play as well then major theme again is hypocrisy and the hypocrisy is seen most of all in the necessity to camouflage the most natural of all drives the drive for sex so it's an impulse that is constantly seen within the text that the women have to hide the need for sex the men especially somebody like mr honor has to believe that has to make husbands believe that he is important if he has to have any access to its women at all so there is a lot of hypocrisy that functions in the play and that hypocrisy is something that was reflective of society also at this point in time though they were all in various degrees um indulging in sexual intrigues none of them allowed it to come out into the open they would all pretend to be very virtuous pretend to be good wives good husbands and at the same time be having an uproarious libertinous life all around so what we see is that there is a lot of lust a lot of buffoonery but there is no possibility of real affection between men and women within the play on the other hand this is countered by the real romance which takes place between harcourt and alethea where you have physical attraction harcourt falls in love with her the minute he sees her but you also have a growing understanding which is demonstrated for us through the play it is slowly that they both come to an understanding that they really want to get married to each other and that alethea even then shows us decency because she does not break off her engagement until she discovers that he is Mr Squeamish is interested Mr Sparkish is interested only because she is a wealthy person so that kind of understanding and that kind of growth and the lack of hypocrisy is something that is not only about physical attraction but is also about two minds which are mutually compatible and two hearts that get along well with each other then of course there is the whole notion and this is something that critics have endorsed that the play is about how if social conditions are such that you cannot get what you want then the play is about getting what you want because you have a better mind than other people around you in society and honor of course explain, exemplifies this because he wants to sleep with as many women as possible he is not being given access to them so he thinks up a strategy by which he can have unobstructed access to all the women in society by claiming that he is important he uses his brains to find a solution to a problem which might otherwise be seen as insuperable Finally we can say that the country wife is one of the bawdiest but also one of the wittiest of english stage comedies and it is in part because women were first introduced on stage that these plays had so many viewers that these plays were so successful it was also because lots of these plays like the country wife itself featured cross dressing so women would be playing their own roles but then they would be asked to dress up like men and appear on stage and these 
are scenes there are scenes in the country wife as well when marjorie pinch wife goes to the play to see a play she is dressed up as her own brother and she is taken to the play so the point of those scenes was something which is still debated by critics today then of course the country wife like a lot of the other comedies of the time also shows us the hypocrisy of society and is seen to be reformatory or is attempts to be reformatory in its attitude towards that hypocrisy and that deception which was prevalent during this period and it also is in one way empowering to women plays such as this because it shows women who were caught in loveless marriages who were unhappy in their lives with their husbands they could have an area of their life which was free of control so they are in one sense empowered when they are cheating their husbands they are being empowered is one way of reading this but overall the plays are about hypocrisy deception and about the triumph of intellect and about physical lust rather than about love you have various critics who have given comments upon various characters within the play and we will just stop with one about ideas of masculinity within the play now there is of course horner who is one version of masculinity his version of masculinity is that he will go around sleeping with everybody uh as opposed to mr harcourt who is supposed to be the version of good masculinity somebody who wants to get married to somebody whom he loves and who will then remain faithful so the play then also gives us versions of both femininity and masculinity if lady fidget marjorie pinch wife dainty fidget are all examples of bad femininity then you have good femininity in the example of alethea so you have examples role models if you will of good and bad women within the text we've come to the end of our discussion on the country wife and we have covered characterization themes the backgrounds to the study of the comedy of manners uh, or restoration comedy as it is called thank you very much